there are five suborbitals in the iron. Each suborbital is represented by one house. And one house um, will be able to accommodate uh, one electron pair. In oxyhemoglobin, the six electrons are paired amongst themselves. So you have five suborbitals and then six electrons. So two in the first one, two and then two. So there are no unpaired electrons. So electrons are happy and content. It is diamagnetic. In the acute stage, when the hemoglobin would lose the oxygen, the electrons will redistribute. So from this configuration, 2, 2, 2, it will become 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. Total of uh, 5 or 6, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 of them are unpaired. Therefore, the oxyhemoglobin is paramagnetic. Notice here that the uh, deoxyhemoglobin has a dome-shaped hem, which will prohibit the electrons from dating the protons. So there will be no dipole-dipole interaction. When deoxyhemoglobin uh, becomes methemoglobin by the process of oxidation, there will be a uh, loss of one electron so here we have a two electrons in the first house here we only have one so one two three four five electrons remain all of them are unpaired therefore methemoglobin is also paramagnetic notice that uh, methemoglobin has now a planar uh, him. Therefore, this will allow dipole dipole interaction. When methemoglobin is outside the cell, it now has a direct dipole-dipole interaction. And direct dipole-dipole interaction is even more T1 bright. In the chronic stage, the methemoglobin becomes eaten by, hemosiderin, uh, by the macrophages and turns into hemosiderin and ferritin, ferritin being water-soluble, while uh, hemosiderin, the insoluble form of the iron.